Yeah, so we're very excited to be here. Um, as Claudia mentioned, today I'm going to be speaking about cryofluorescence tomography. Um, we're going to focus on how this is a new imaging modality for preclinical research. And kind of the goals of the talk for today are how CFT could optimize your imaging workflows with high resolution and quantitative fluorescence data. So let's begin. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of the talk I'll be giving, I'm going to obviously explain what is CFT. Um, you'll be meeting Zara, which is our platform that uses CFT, some of the research advantages of using um, this modality, and also just the workflow. How can this integrate into your existing workflows if you do imaging, if you're thinking of doing imaging? And I'll focus on some of the preclinical applications that we have focused on. Um, for the sake of time, I might speak a little faster or like highlight them a little quickly, but if you're very much interested, um, you can ask questions at the end of the talk or feel free to um, email us or reach us on the website. We're more than happy to meet with you and speak about your specific study designs. Um, so let's see, what is cryofluorescence tomography? So cryofluorescence tomography is actually an imaging technique. It captures 2D fluorescence and white light images of ex vivo serial sections and compiles them into 3D images. Something very unique to CFT is that it has a great range of like volumetric density. As you can see on the left hand side, we have a synomologous head all the way to a whole animal, a mouse, and we can also do small organs such as the brain or the kidney. So a big question we had to like ask is where does CFT or actually fit in, in, in just imaging period? You know, we have those that are really focused on microscopy and then those that are just really devout to in vivo imaging. And that's been really main, been the stakehold in just the field. So CFT really bridges the gap between the two by allowing us to like actually have, you know, data and images that fill in a, a resolution and actually a massive interrogation that previously was not focused in before. And you're able to get images like you see on the right hand side, and I'll show you a little bit more how we acquire those images. But before I do so, I want you to actually meet the platform, Zara, and what makes it very much unique. And what makes it unique is that it actually features a high resolution camera, it's 12 megapixels, it has an automatic, an automated slicing. So those days of like handheld cryostats and all that is over, which is great. Um, and we also have six high powered lasers and seven narrow band emission filters. And what's wonderful is that um, those that do fluorescence imaging, for example, you know there's a wide array of fluorophores and those that worry about like, for example, depth penetration or you know um, multiplexing. We really have a platform that can address all of these things. And that's really great because it actually allows us to have like quantitative fluorescence imaging. We are able to get micro resolution. This is an automated process that actually has ease of use. There's not necessarily a devoted or dedicated technician to this modality. You know, someone in your lab or, you know, many people, for example, like in this workflow can obviously assist. And ultimately, the goal is to get high resolution 3D fluorescence imaging from this platform. So some of the research advantages um, of our of Zara and CFT are the superior resolution. We're able to provide a resolution uh, down to 20 microns. We range from 20 microns to 55 microns. We also offer high sensitivity. Um, we're able to overcome some of the limitations as um, those who, all, again, work with fluorescence imaging. There's some issues with depth penetration. By the nature of how the Zara actually functions, we're able to detect signals deep in the tissue that we previously couldn't do before. The also we're high throughput. Um, the Zara works, and as I'll show on the next slide, by actually focusing on or putting an animal into a block. So you can process, for example, several mice or multiple dissected organs like kidneys and brains on the same block. So it really just is a great high throughput process of imaging. And it's also robust. Um, I, I, I assume, I'm speaking also from experience, that typically when you're doing one kind of imaging, you don't just stick to it per se. There's also um, you know, other forms of imaging you'll integrate into your workflow, whatever it may be, whether it be MRI or PET. So CFT is definitely robust. It's able to combine with those, uh, definitely with those other imaging modalities that you can acquire, and even microscopy, in which I'll highlight um, some of the histology um, complement that we can offer with our technology. 
In addition, it's also streamlined. What's great also is that these tissues, when we actually image them, we don't, you don't have to fix them, you don't have to perfuse them. There's no tissue clearing or radio labeling required to maintain the anatomical context of whatever you're interrogating, whether it be a whole animal or a brain or a kidney or, or, what, or a liver, whatever you're looking at. And it's also, as, as I mentioned, just really versatile because just the wide range of our visualization that goes from 470 to 780 nanometers. So let's speak a little bit about the workflow. So basically, this is the experimental setup of a block where a whole tissue is embedded here with OCT. The OCT is then frozen, where then the block is then taken out and mounted into the system. In our technology, we offer di five different fields of view, and depending on the field of view, you have different resolutions. And then a camera images the block in fluorescence and white light. And this is repeated hundreds of times again and again. And ultimately, at the end of a data, like a run, you're able to get an image stack that is reconstructed into a 3D model. So by the end, you're able to see what you couldn't see before. You have your animal that was embedded in OCT. You have a high resolution scan. You have a 10 micron width of tissue removed each time when it's repeated with the slicing. And you're able to get a 3D reconstructed image, I would say, rather relatively rather quickly. And it actually replaces, as we mentioned, like, you know, sometimes tedious lab work, obviously integral, but something that is automated with our system. So just to highlight, begin to highlight some of the applications of this is that from one sample, because this, I mind you, this is an ex vivo technique, you're able to get interrogate like a data point that you previously didn't think to actually interrogate. And you're able to get, for example, comprehensive biodistribution if your focus is in drug discovery. You can determine the impact of tumor burden in your oncology models. You can design multiplexing experiments. Our platform allows for multiplexing. And we're truly maximizing the data we get from one animal. And ultimately, you will have a complete data set um, if you're doing a time course study or other studies in like drug discovery or whatever it is your application, you'll have a wealth of data to really just analyze and, and you know, get whatever it is that you may need depending on your application and context. So now I'll be highlighting some of the applications um, that we have been doing with CFT. As you can see, it's a wide array. It ranges from gene expression to drug discovery to neuroscience to cancer biology, immunology, nanotechnology. There's, and I'm sure there's a whole host more. We're very excited to like work with researchers and really just get this technology out there. So like I said, if you're interested, we're more than happy to speak with you and really see how we can optimize your fluorescence imaging. So um, the first uh, slide I'm gonna show now is here's an ovarian cancer model and we can see the difference between, you know, I wanna say, I guess, typical like in vivo fluorescence imaging, as you can see on the right, and just the high resolution image you'll get using our platform. You're literally seeing things that you would not see necessarily from an in vivo modality. And that's really what makes our platform so great. And we also offer tools that you can actually like quantify and determine like, okay, how much fluorescence am I actually getting? And you um, are able to really apply this to, for in this case, it's an ovarian cancer model, but whatever model you're looking at. Another for gene expression, Gene expression is obviously important in the roles of genes and their expression on behavior and disease phenotypes. Here is a 4T1 mouse in, um, it's a mammary tumor cell line. And here they were both expressing luciferase and DS red. And as you can see um, on the bioluminescence model, you obviously get signal, of course, but CFT, when we perform this experiment with CFT, you could actually see the long metastasis that you could not see in the bioluminescence. And this is just the value of having this uh, modality and just the high resolution images that you're able to get. Because obviously for those that their focus is oncology, the fact that there's metastasis is very important. And determine where those metastases happen and their locations is, is in absolutely integral to oncology. So here is one example of that. Um, I will now highlight drug discovery, one of my personal favorites. Um, for example, with CFT, we can characterize a drug candidate. The importance of like biodistribution is integral. Like, what is a drug going to the site of interest? 
uh, where is it the excretion? How is it happening? You can get all these insights and you can use it, um, you know, for example, using all the different kinds of like, you know, drug agents, like small molecules, antibody drug conjugates, diagnostic antibodies that are on the mark, like being developed or even, you know, like on the market. So um, we can also get a wealth of data, pharmacodynamic data. Um, and also we can also get, I get kind of excited because it's my field, <laughs> that you're able to actually get, uh, get information about the affinity and selectivity uh, for a target, which is really wonderful. So in this slide, we're looking at um, a kidney. So what the purpose of the study was is that they were looking at the drug development of an, an intrafecal drug. So they decided to look at two routes of administration. One was intrathecally injected and the other was IV. And as you can see, like we're able to determine and look at the difference between the tracers, the, the difference between the administration of the tracers. But also I want to highlight something to you is that the high resolution also translates to like the white light data collected and just the anatomy that we get from actually looking at these kidney images is really profound and something that you don't really see in most modalities. Because sometimes there's a trade-off where you get like really good either resolution or you get, you know, low sensitivity. Um, but here, I feel like CFT is really the culmination of both. Um, and that makes it very exciting. Here's another study where um, also an, uh, highlighting an in, intrathecal injection of an AAV9 labeled with iodine-125 and RFP. And they were looking at like the biodistribution of the drug. And it actually with CFT, they were able to determine that the biodistribution actually left the spine or the areas of interest that they were looking at. And what's also like interesting, for example, when, especially for those that are using like radio labels, when you're using a radio label, you have to wait for the decay to happen with that radio label. You can't like multiplex with like a radio label or something like that. So um, CFT really overcomes that. And if you're able to use a fluorophore, you know, it's also non-toxic. So it's something also to like think about when you're designing studies in, uh, for animals and so forth. Um, it really overcomes some of the limitations of, for example, nuclear imaging and so forth. So now I will highlight um, immunology. Obviously, um, immunology is also very important because it's a mechanism of immune reactions and we know how that really affects um, different disease paradigms. So here we're looking at how in immunology, we're looking at how that affected macrophage imaging. So here we are with uh, mice, they were bearing xenografts and they were administered something called V-Sense. So V-Sense is actually a perfluorocarbon nanoemulsion and it also contains an NIR fluorophore. So on the left, you see IVIS, which is obviously something very typical of in vivo imaging. And then um, in the middle, you have, for example, MRI and then the CFT image. And you can, this is a really great example of the trade-off that sometimes happens with different modalities. As you can see in the IVIS image, you have low resolution. It's not really the best. And then in the MRI, we sometimes get low sensitivity, but again, CFT is a great platform for high resolution, high sensitivity um, that you're able to detect um, the floor for and how it goes and, and actually determine like how this, is this really like getting at the macrophages and how it actually impacts the tumors and so forth. So to highlight also cancer biology, um, I really will say like the applications in this, in this application of cancer and oncology are really endless um, because if you design a study, you can really hone in on if you're studying microenvironments, heterogeneity, metastatic spread, the um, specific bio biomarkers. Um, the possibilities I almost want to say are endless, like uh, with a well-designed study, you can visualize so many things using our platform. Um, and here I'm highlighting um, vSense one more time. And what was interesting about this is that um, on the far right, we actually were able to determine tumor heterogeneity, where like the tumor was actually segmented out. We have, like I mentioned before, we have something called VivoQuant that we're able to like upload the 3D reconstructed images. And you're able to then segment out your areas of interest. In this case, obviously, it's the areas of tumor. And we were able to determine from the study that the, the tumor heterogeneity that we couldn't previously see from other modalities. So that was something really impactful that we were able to get from um, the study design. And 
I will now like highlight neuroscience. Uh, neuroscience, again, you were looking at physiology, anatomy, molecular biology of the brain. We want to determine how there is disease etiology in the progression. And we can absolutely monitor that with fluorescence visualization. So we can do that, obviously. Um, you know, it's also, this also relates also to drug discovery, getting PK and uh, pharmacodynamic data. But in this study, we were looking at the delivery of ASOs or antisense oligonucleotides that were labeled with size seven and they were evaluated in the brain. So what was great about this is we were actually able to do a time course study. For those involved in drug discovery, this is absolutely essential you know, to, to have really great representative time course studies of a drug and how they distribute over time. So here we can see from one hour to 12 hours, the distribution of the drug and to highlight it further, we're able to then really look at uh, the brain and then determine over the hours of time, like what was the changes in fluorescence intensity and the distribution of the, of the drug. And something further I also wanna mention is that we also have software that can actually like determine the areas of the brain that where the drug accumulated, that we have a brain atlas that can really help you hone in on, okay, specifically where, is it the ventral tegmental area? Is it the hippocampus? Whatever your area of interest. So we're able to do really great things um, with our technology. And to take it one step further, um, during the cryo slicing, we also offer the option of actually collecting a tissue slice as wherever the area of interest may be. In this example, we're looking at a brain, a mouse brain, but you know, if you're like, for example, looking at a specific tumor or like uh, the liver or the GI tract, wherever, um, you're actually able to collect a slice and then you know, are able to do standard histology, which further complements the technology. So we're not just staying within the realm of fluorescence imaging, but we also can apply it to microscopy and actually like visualize um, that tissue collection um, here. And as you can see on the right-hand side, visualize this uh, slice that was taken from the brain. So it really like culminates and comes all together. And that's what's very exciting about CFT is that it's, it really complements other imaging modalities. It can easily integrate into your workflow. And also it, you can have histology data, which is also very integral because it's kind of like a gold standard, you know, for those who perform histology, you know. Um, so it's, it's great. So lastly, I'll just focus quickly on nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is obviously very much up and coming. The, the, um, there's so many things that can be done, but nanomaterials with like a fluorescent reporter group are great because they allow, again, for visualization on CFT. And um, I'm just bringing up this slide one more time because as I mentioned, I already spoke about like the results, but this is actually, VSense is a nano emulsion. It's actually commercially available. So um, something I also want to like point out, because since I'm very well versed in fluorescence imaging and fluorophores, I'm not so intimidated by them. But if you are, there's ways to like start to integrate them into your workflow where there's commercially available fluorophores that you can obviously purchase and integrate into whatever study design you have. Um, Vsense, for example, is one of them. And you can see the wealth of data that you can get from that. Um, there's obviously those that, you know, prefer to take like a very like uh, chemist, like, you know, uh, organic chemist uh, approach and integrating them into whatever design they have. It doesn't necessarily need to be that way. Um, we can absolutely guide you and help you depending on your study design on what it is that you're looking at to really find the optimal floor for, you know, whether it be like, you know, in the red range or the more the NIR range, we can have those discussions. So in conclusion, I just wanted to like express to you just the importance of CFT, how it's a high resolution imaging modality, as you can see for a wide variety of applications. It builds upon your existing imaging workflows. And even if you don't have an existing imaging workflow, it's a great start. Um, something I also actually wanted to point out is that if you're starting off exploring whatever um, preclinical application, CFT is a really great modality to do proof of concept studies. You know, if this is really just a great place to like, you know, I think this may possibly work, but I don't want to invest a lot of time and effort into, you know, like using, for example, PET or MRI or, or doing something else. Um, this is really the, a great like starting point. 
um, if, if this is something you want to explore. Then it's obviously going to give you high resolution and high sensitivity to what you may be looking for. Because it, uh, from the examples I've shown, it actually overcomes a low resolution, low sensitivity limitations of um, other in vivo imaging modalities out there. So um, lastly, I just wanted to hone in on the point that um, CFT really maximizes the data collected from one animal because you could, for example, run your whole um, you know, study design in you know, whatever it is that you have, like you know, um, your in vivo work, you, know, you did your bioluminescence and you wanna get that last data point before you sacrifice your animals. This is it. You know, you're able to collect such a wealth of data and you didn't even have that before. So I really wanted to just highlight that you're really maximizing the data you can get from your animal studies. And that's what really makes CFT um, something really promising. So I wanted to thank everyone for their time. Um, like I said, you can contact us at info at emitimaging.com or you can visit our website, emitimaging.com and I will be glad to take any questions.